This video is sponsored by Supremacy One, a new online PvP strategy game available to play for free on your mobile device or PC. Lead your nation to victory in World War I as you battle up to 84 of your greatest enemies. Take part in campaigns that stretch on for weeks as they test your strategic thinking against one another in this geographically accurate map where it's up to you to rewrite history. Forge alliances or declare war on your neighbors as you path a way to victory, researching new technologies, conquering provinces, and vying for world domination. As a cross-platform game, you can start a game on your phone and end your battle at home on your computer. We have a special promotion for our fans providing 13,000 gold and a one-month premium subscription, completely free. Available for just 30 days from today, you won't want to miss out on your chance at world domination. Click the link in the description to get started now. Periscope Rifles – Weird Tech – World War I For the soldiers stuck in the stalemate of World War I, fighting from the trenches was no easy task. Shooting from the trenches meant that a soldier had to stand up over the parapet, exposing his head in order to aim at the enemy, posing a perfect target for enemy snipers. Therefore, soldiers needed to find a way to shoot the enemy without the risk of being exposed and shot. The invention of the periscope rifle would allow them to avoid that risk. Although it appeared on the Western Front first, the invention of the periscope rifle can't be credited to just one individual. The necessity to stay concealed while shooting led to almost simultaneous occurrences of periscope rifles on the battlefields across Europe. Some were made in specialized workshops, and some were improvised by soldiers on the battlefield. The first patent for a periscope rifle attachment was by William Yulton from Great Britain. He applied for the patent in the first days of the war in 1914. His device, named the Hyposcope, was a rifle butt sighting attachment. It consisted of one double reflecting prism that was mounted over the butt. The prism allowed the shooter to aim while staying below the line of sight. The hyposcope was designed to be attached on British Lee Enfield rifles, but was used with other rifles and even machine guns as well. Without knowledge of Yulton's invention, an Australian, Lance Corporal William Beach, invented his version of the periscope rifle in May 1915, in the trenches of Gallipoli. Beach got the idea after witnessing his fellow soldiers being shot in the head while trying to shoot the Turks above the trenches. Being a construction foreman, he worked to attach a periscope to a rifle. His device was a wooden frame for the Lee Enfield rifle, with a box periscope. The upper mirror of the periscope was in line with the rifle's sights, and the lower mirror aligned to the soldier's eyes. The shot was fired via a wire that was connected to the rifle's trigger. With this device, a soldier could shoot his rifle from the top of the parapet while standing safely below it. The accuracy of the periscope rifle was relative and depended on the skillfulness of the shooter. However, as the distance between the opposing trenches on the Gallipoli battlefield was pretty small, the periscope rifle proved to be effective. The drawback of the device was that the bolt was out of the reach of the shooter, who had to take the rifle back down to cycle it after each shot. As Beach's periscope rifle proved its worth, he was ordered to establish a workshop on the beaches behind the front lines, where he made more periscope rifles. The Turks eventually captured and copied their own versions later on. Another British periscope rifle was one constructed by J. E. Chandler. The device he made in September 1915 was more complex but more efficient than previous inventions as it had levers for actuating the bolt. This rifle allowed the shooter to fire all 10 rounds from the rifle without having to bring it down each time. Periscope rifles were also used by the German army. Among their many field improvisations, the Germans also produced factory-made periscope attachments. Their periscope rifle attachment, the Spiegelkolben, was quite simple in its design, but it was very effective. Its entire frame contained the periscope and was made of steel with a buttstock of its own, which resulted in better accuracy. To fire, the soldier pulled the auxiliary trigger, which was attached to the rifle's trigger by a chain. Some versions had a mechanism to cycle the bolt without bringing the rifle down after each shot. Another improvement allowed the soldier to adjust the periscope height. The German periscope rifle also had an extended 25-round magazine and luminous sights for shooting at night. The most advanced periscope rifles were made in the United States. One such device was made by J.L. Cameron and Lawrence E. Yagi from Cleveland, Ohio. Their device was a steel frame designed for the Springfield Model 1903 rifle with a magnifying periscope, 
trigger extension, and bolt-action lever. In addition, there was a 25-round extended magazine. Another American design was made by Mr. Guyberson from California. At first glance, Guyberson's model looked like a standard Springfield M1903 rifle. However, the press of a button opened a collapsible hinged stock with a built-in periscope, turning the ordinary rifle into a periscope rifle. This design was definitely the most advanced version and had great mobility, but it seems it was made too late to see action on the battlefield. Periscope rifles were primarily used by standard infantrymen, while marksmen preferred the standard sniper rifles and hidden nests. Although periscope rifles did provide safe shooting from cover, they were quite inaccurate. As the weapon was being used from below while laid on sandbags instead of being held firmly in a soldier's hands, periscope rifles were very unstable and the recoil was much greater. For a sniper, such a device couldn't compare with having the rifle firmly in his shoulder. Furthermore, aiming through the periscope wasn't an easy task, especially if the mirrors became smeared, which was frequently the case in the muddy trenches. Also, if a mirror was shot out of the periscope by an enemy sniper, any form of replacement mirror had to be found, including shaving mirrors. With a periscope rifle, even a good shooter had the problem of hitting the target at distances further than 100 yards.